الحمد لله رب العالمين جزاكم الله خير بارك الله فيكم بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن ولا واستنى بسنته واقتدى بهداه إلى يوم الدين اللهم آمين يا رب العالمين I would like to say all praises due to Allah the first and the last the inward and the outward, the beautiful, the magnificent, the majestic, the provider, the protector, the one who guides us all. Always we start with praising Allah Jalla Jalaluhu and, you know, in reality no one is there permanently except Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala and we will all vanish and we'll all go just like our parents and grandparents and just like our children and grandchildren will also grow. So this is beautiful. This is amazing. This feels good. How did we end up with this? Because of Allah. So love Allah for everything that you enjoy in your life. And these things that you don't enjoy, the source of pain, ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give you meaning for that pain to give you patience to deal with that pain and consistency, to give you reward so that pain is gone for nothing. It's rewarded. And at that point, that pain will become a joy. Right? So, brothers and sisters, um, we want to remember Allah and fill our hearts with the remembrance of Allah and say, thank you, Allah, thank you, Allah, thank you for everything. And thank you for the greatest ni'mah, which is the ni'mah of Islam, that is helping us to be positive and to be productive and to have a purpose and to have a meaning. We also thank you, Ya Allah, and we drive from your love, the love of the Prophet wasallam. And this is what the Prophet said, love Allah because of his blessings on you. Love me for the love of Allah. Right? So who sent us Prophet Muhammad Allah. Who sent us Al-Quran al kareem his word to communicate with him? Allah. Who sent us an Islam as a way of life? Positive, productive, meaningful, focused, amazing way of life? Allah. Who created the heavens and the earth for us? Allah. Who gave us a body? Allah. Who made us smart, educated, make money? Who gave us that money? Allah. So fill your heart with Allah's love and always reserve a place in your heart for Allah that no one else shares. That's the essence of Tawheed. That's La ilaha illallah. From that love comes another love, which is the love of the Prophet And quickly, I just want to address two points. I see a lot of young people here, alhamdulillah, and the way I understand the meaning of the word young, anyone who is ready to change, to become a better person, Fast, quick, with agility, is young. Who's young? The one who's willing to change, excited to change, want to change, want to become better. You're young, even if you're 60 or 80. Barakallahu feek. Very good news, huh? Who's old? The one who said, this is the way I am. Take it or leave it. I don't change. By Allah, you're old, even if you're 16 or 18. You know why we call old people old? Because they don't change. They're set in their own ways. Do you know what we have today? <laughs> old people, young and young people. <laughs> old, so get out of it. I look in your faces. I'm sorry. I see our old aunties and uncles. Their faces, zero wrinkles. I look at the young, 16, a thousand wrinkles. What's wrong? Change, right? It starts from here. So... I say to all of us, inshallah, let's approach this and, you know, understand that the idea of a role model. I see the young, people sometimes don't relate. Maybe we were lucky, we saw our parents, we grew up in a Muslim country. The Prophet, the Prophet, the Prophet. we are in love, we cry, we love. And our youngsters looking at us and they're not getting it. I'm going to, inshallah, help you to get it. What do you like? Do you like basketball? 
it's natural for us human beings to have role models. You never played basketball in your life. You see someone who plays basketball very well, you say, oh my God, I want to be like him. He becomes your role model. Or you already like basketball, and then you look at someone who plays basketball very well, you say, I want to become like him. Who, who do you like? Stephen Curry, Kobe Bryant. My generation is Michael Jordan. Carl Malone, you know the mailman? Come on, but nobody knows these people. 1995 to, 90, to 2000, they were playing amazing, and they're still some of the greatest players. So your generation, having a role model is part of our psychology. Remember, when you were a kid, you're always looking at your mom and dad. Oh my God, when I grow up, I want to become like my dad. Oh my God, when I grow up, I want to become like my mom. It's part of the human psychology. You grew up a little bit, up to age 13, and then suddenly you start looking at your friends. Oh my God, I want to become like this friend. No, 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 like that friend. Oh, no, 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 like he's funny. Oh, she's amazing. Oh, she's a, she, I want to be like this. I want to be like this. Naturally, this is what happens to you without you thinking. You grow up and it depends what you want to do in life. You know, in high school, everybody's applying for colleges. You're like, I want to apply for college too. I'm not, I'm not missing anything because you have role models around you. People in college start getting snapped by companies. You're like, I want to be snatched by a company too. I want to become a doctor too. I want to become an engineer. I want to become a lawyer. I want to become a businessman. If you want to start up a company, you start, oh my God, I need to read the life of Steve Jobs. I need to read the life of Bill Gates. I need to read the life of Elon Musk. I need to read the life of this and that. Depends who's this. This is natural. This is part of being a human. You always will have a role model, whether you know it or not. The question is, all of these role models are in their small space, in their whatever you're trying but we human beings need an ultimate role model. You know what happened with Elon Musk? A couple of weeks ago, a month ago, he lied to make people buy the stocks. They caught him. They fired him from the board of directors, but they kept him the executive director, right? He's disputing it. You get it? He's an amazing startup company, but he lied. Do you want to be like that? So that's one thing that you want to get in your head. Why the Prophet ﷺ? Why did Allah send the messenger? Because it's part of being a human that you grow up always looking for role models. Whether you know it or not, whether you like it or not, whether you believe in it or not, this is what's happening in your life. You don't live in a vacuum. You, live, you don't live on a planet on your own. Number one. Are we clear? Are we cool? That's why we have what? A role model. Number two. Who's it today? Who's it? The Amazing role model. Someone who started from humble beginnings and made so much money, became very successful in the world of business. Right or wrong? And these people have an amazing life. Even though they are running a big company, they still have an amazing hobbies and they do amazing things. Like what? They are mountain hikers, rock climbers, cave campers, and they do yoga. This is it. Today, 2018, 2019. Who's it? Oh my God, these people have time to do all of this. And they're amazing in time management and they make it big. And still when they make it big inside their company, they act humble like they're nobody. Oh my God, that makes people even more attracted to them. Who's it today? These people, when they eat, they eat different. They eat special. They have something called raw food diet. They have something called low calorie diet. They have something called, you know, eating one type of food diet. They have something, they go sometimes when they eat meat, they eat meat. They're just amazing. They're just something different. They're amazing. And these people, like they're, they do different things and, and, they are, and then they're, they have ideas. And then when they make a lot of money, then they go and make some charity like Bill Gates and all of that. Everything I said right now is nothing but a description of Prophet Muhammad. Who's the mountain hiker, rock climber, cave camper? That's the mountain of Hira right there. Today, with stairs, it takes you an hour with breaks to go to Ghar Hira. Take the stairs out. Good luck reaching up there. Who's the one that his wife said, from the crescent to the crescent to the crescent, we never lit a fire to cook food. They still were eating, but they were not eating cooked food. You know what you call that? Raw food diet. You know what's the problem? We're not impressed by our own. We're impressed by everything. Any magazine, you pick it up. This diet, oh my God, this is impressive. I want to try that one. But we're not impressed with our own prophet. Who's the one who was doing meditation when no one else was doing meditation? The prophet, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. First ibadah in Islam. 
Who's the one that connected with nature? And, and nature spoke to him and he spoke to nature. You know the rock in Mecca? The Prophet is 10, 12 years old. Assalamu alaikum ya Rasulullah. He used to get scared and run away. A rock saying assalamu What is it? What's assalamu It is still Islam is not revealed. Right? Who's the one that the tree covers him when he sits down? He's talking to nature and nature is talking to him. Get impressed by your own prophet. Enough is enough. We're impressed by everyone else except our own prophet Who's the one who has an amazing time management to be the leader, the military leader, the people leader, but yet have time to come to the masjid, live next to the masjid, become accessible to people and listen to them? The prophet before he gives khutbah to Jum'ah, someone comes and says, I want to talk to you, Rasulullah. He stops the khutbah, he sits down, he talks to the man. Before he leads Salat al-Isha, someone comes and says, Ya Rasulullah, I want to talk to you. He takes him back, he speaks to him until midnight. While people are waiting, they sat down, they were waiting. They will never rush the Prophet. They were looking, 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 then they sat down. Then they were looking, looking, looking then they sat down. And then they fell asleep. And then they woke up. And then the Prophet led Salat al-Isha. Who has time to talk to the old and to the young? Who was... Always humble and stayed humble. And he told people, don't treat me like people treat their kings. I am not a king. I am Allah's servant and slave and prophet and a messenger. Do not stand up to me. When I come, when I find an, old, an open place, let me sit in the open place. Right? Yes, sometimes people stood up to him and that happened. But he didn't want it to become a habit. Yes, he allowed people to kiss his hand and kiss his feet. When he was coming back from Ta'if, Adas, he kissed the hand of the Prophet and went down to his feet and kissed it. But he did not make that all the time, all the time, all the time, all the time. He wanted to teach people, I'm one of you and you are of me. But I am the messenger of Allah and I'm here as a rahmah for you. So who stayed humble to the last moment? That's the Prophet ﷺ. So be impressed with your own role model. Because whatever is it today, who started with being a shepherd from humble beginnings and he became a businessman and made a lot of money. And here is where I want to start my topic here. He was called as sadiqul Ami. The truthful, the honest, and the trustworthy. They gave me the part, the truthful, and the honest. Let me tell you something. Let's get this clear. If there was another one or two or three or four or five people in the market that were also truthful and trustworthy, they would have not called the prophet that. You only call someone the truthful, trustworthy, that means he's the only one. Because it will become confusing. The truthful and the trustworthy, which one? Muhammad or Ahmad or Khalid or Al-Walid, which trustworthy? No, no, no. When you call someone the Al-Sadiq al the Arab knows when they talk what they're saying. The one. So I want you to think with me. You're surrounded by cheaters and liars. You're the only one who's telling the truth. In the world of business, is that an advantage or disadvantage? It's a disadvantage because everyone is lying and cheating. You're the one who's telling the truth. Now I want you to think with me and get impressed. How smart does the Prophet have to be to double, triple, and quadruple the Prophet for Khadija while he's a Sadiq al Amin in the middle of flyers. Amazing businessman. Amazing businessman. Amazing businessman. The problem is we're not impressed. And everything else impresses us. So we want to come back to our roots and we want to be impressed. So a Sadiq al Amin. I was like looking, you know, subhanAllah. Today is the time for me, I, myself, individuality, this and that. Islam and the prophets and the messengers is anything but selfishness and individuality. That's why from Ibrahim alayhi salam, Allah tells him, Ya Ibrahim, I will give you words. Ibrahim fulfilled the words, yani the commandments of Allah. So Allah said, I will make you to mankind imama. Immediately Ibrahim said, how about my children? Allah said, the oppressors will not get my covenant. But those who make choices like you, I will give them the covenant. I will, they will be honorable in my so Allah grants Ibrahim, Ismail, and Ishaq. Ismail comes first. What is the description of Ismail in the Quran? Are you, are you ready? This will explain it. It runs in the blood. وَذْكُرْ فِي الْكِتَابِ إِسْمَعِيلِ Mention in the book Ismail. إِنَّهُ كَانَ صَادِقَ الْوَعْدِ 
he used to fulfill and be truthful to his promises. وَكَانَ رَسُولَ النَّبِيَّ And he was a messenger and a prophet. Who was called As-Sadiq Al-Ameen before As-Sadiq Al-Ameen? Ismail, the son of Ibrahim, the father of Muhammad. إِنَّهُ كَانَ صَادِقَ الْوَعْدِ وَكَانَ رَسُولَ النَّبِيَّ It's unbelievable. This Ismail alayhi salam and Ibrahim had a vision. It's all about starting with yourself, then your family, then the spiritual family. So, there is a special place for Ibrahim and his al. Who's his al? Ismail and Ishaq. Whose children? Ismail has 12 children. Do you know about the 12 children of Ismail? You only know about the 12 children of Ya'qub alayhi salam. As a matter of fact, some of the Mufassireen called Al-Asbat the children of Ismail, not the children of Ya'qub. You understand? But whether they're the children of Ya'qub or the children of Ismail, we, we love them all. Whatever, we don't have this discrimination or this problem. Whether it's Muhammad وسلم, or Musa or Isa, we love them all, we believe in them all. We don't have that problem. Oh, we don't believe in that. No, no, we actually believe in that. But I'm just giving you an understanding. The children, it's about the family. Sometimes people will not listen to you. You're left with your own family. If you're a good example, your family will listen to you. So now, this Ismail alayhi salam and the choices that Ibrahim made and Ismail made and the children of Ismail, one after another made, were amazing choices. You want me to give you one example of their choices? I'll tell you one example. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, Allah kept on moving me from honorable backs of men to honorable women, wombs of women. There was no zina, there was no rape, there was no sifah, there was no adultery, there was no fornication. Do you know what that means? That means every father in the genealogy of the Prophet ﷺ made a choice. And we're talking about times that there was no Prophet. Yani before Prophet Muhammad ﷺ, the last Prophet was Jesus. Where was Jesus? Isa salam. In Jerusalem, not in Mecca. The last Prophet that came to these people, they say the Anbiya of the Arab are five. Ismail salam, right? Shu'aib salam, right? Hud alayhi salam, Salih alayhi salam, and Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. But when was the last? Uh, but even though no Prophet in this, the fitra is strong, the choices are right, and he's what? And they made a choice to always go for halal. One example, what difference does it make for you to make a choice today? What impact it has on you and on your children to the day of judgment? Do you choose halal? Your children will choose halal. You choose haram, your children will choose haram. And in a sense, we're so honored and so honored. Do you know what Allah called us? Allah called us the children of Ibrahim. Do you know what Allah called Ibrahim? Your father. Is Ibrahim your father? He's not your biological father, but he's your spiritual father. Millata abikum Ibrahim. This deen is the milla, the way of life, the conviction of your father Ibrahim. And this Ibrahim, who was sammakum al muslimin min qabl? He's the one who named you Muslims. Look, Ibrahim is thinking of us, who? You and I, the Muslims. The Muslims are thinking of who? Ibrahim. What's the gap? Only a few thousand years. Only four or five thousand years. Yes. And from Jesus, two thousand. Jesus above, probably six thousand years, the gap between us and Ibrahim. But the connection is strong as if it is your father. Your father, that's Ibrahim. So Allah Azza wa Jal gave the children of Ibrahim special honor, the children of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam special honor. But Allah, after giving Alul Bayt their special honor, the blood of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Allah said, now there is the Alul Bayt in blood, and then there is the followers and the Ummah, and they are the family. And Ibrahim is your father, Ismail is your father, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is your father. So be proud and be impressed. As-Sadiq, people take the honest. What I found out is that when people say As-Sadiq al-Ameen, they're talking about how the Prophet ﷺ was honest and truthful with the others. But I'm going to tell you something. That's only a reflection of him being honest and truthful with himself. Please do not forget that. Honesty with others is only a reflection of honesty with yourself. 
So I want you to think deep. Are you honest with yourself or not? Do you know what makes a person want to change when they're honest with themselves? Do you know what makes a person doesn't want to change when they think they're perfect? Hmm. Do you know what's the mother of all honesty? La ilaha illallah. Do you know what you're saying? You're saying, I'm not a God. But you say, Sheikh, I never said I am God. Yeah, you never said it like that. But let me tell you something. One, you think you are in control. And when things don't go your way, you go upset. You think you're God. But you don't say I am God. You have expectations from life and expectations from people and expectations from God. And when God and people and life does not fulfill your expectations, you go mad and upset. You never said I'm God. But you act like one. You say, I am perfect. He has a problem. She has a problem. And he has a problem. He has a problem. He has a problem. But I have no problem. Who's perfect? Allah. You're infallible. You're not infallible. You're a sinner. So we, the mother of all honesty, is la ilaha illallah. I am not God. Allah is God and I am is Ab. So, if I am not God, and I'm a human, and I am, I make mistakes, then now, what's next? What's next is to be honest with myself. Where do I need to change? What's wrong with me? How can I transform? Brothers and sisters, Islam came to make that transformation. This Sadiq, to be honest with yourself. Do you know what happens to people? Allah warned us in the Quran, and it's the most scary thing to me, at least. It's very scary. It's when you, between you and yourself, there is a veil. And between you and yourself, you're lying to yourself. You say, nobody can lie to himself. Yes, you can lie to yourself. And yes, you can believe your own lies. Do you know when Allah made the longest qasam in the Quran? Longest qasam in the Quran. Only Allah to talk about your nafs. And Allah said, people, the way they deal with their nafs is one of two ways. Either they find what's wrong and they start washing and cleaning, and that's called honesty. Or, very interesting word that Allah used. Or people hide themselves. وَقَدْ خَابَ مَنْ Well, why hide? It, it mind-boggling. Why hide? Do you know what? Why hide? Because the mother of all problems... The opposite of tazkiyah is you're looking at your heart and saying, there's nothing wrong with me, there's nothing wrong. <gasps> there's nothing wrong with me, there's nothing wrong. No, 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 I'm okay, I'm okay. She's wrong, he's wrong. Get... Then you get scared from facing yourself and your darkest places, so you never change. Now, you failed at being honest and truthful with yourself. You think you're going to be honest and truthful with the people? It's not going to happen. So that's why the gist of Islam is that transformation, the gist of Islam and the gist of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I want to mention one thing. I was mentioning it like 10, 15 years ago. And then this Jewish lady from Seattle, I keep on forgetting her name. She did a TED Talk and she said something like, wow, I should have been on TED Talk. <laughs> you know what it is? I will just show one moment of honesty. People don't pay attention to this, but this is one of the proofs that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did not make up this stuff. You're going to the cave. You're writing poem, you're writing your ideas, you're writing your reflection, you're waiting for it to be done, 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 done. You come home after five years. Guess what, Khadija? We're done. I have it. I'm ready. I'm prepared. This is Kadhab, liar. He wrote it and he says God gave it to him. Do you know how the prophet came back to Khadija? Frightened, shaken, because he's honest. Because he would not pretend and he would not lie about something. He was not looking for, I want to become great. But you know in that humbleness, you know that in that self-honesty, you know that in that is all greatness. That's the hardest thing to you. You know, I'll tell you something. When you talk to people, at least in my experience, hello, assalamu alaikum, how are you? I'll kiss your head, you kiss my head, I'll kiss your hand, you kiss my hand, everything. We're happy. The second you ask people to change, they walk away. 
they can't handle it. The second you give an advice and you say, brother, I think you need to change. Do you have an advice for me? Because I will take any advice, inshallah. But I have an advice for you. Would you change this and this and that? That's when people run away. And you know why 100 people in Mecca believed out of 10,000 people? Do you know what was the success rate of the Prophet ﷺ? 1%. Do I need to finish the sentence? I don't need to finish it. You make the calculation, what's the other percentage? Do you know why? Because people do not want to change. And if you don't want to transform and change slowly but surely, you will live and die talking about Allah is beautiful. Prophet is beautiful. Islam is beautiful. The Quran is amazing. The Sunnah is great. And you are not amazing. And you are ugly. And you are disgusting. <laughs> but you keep on talking. And you think, you think all what Allah wants from you is to say, Allah is beautiful. The message is beautiful. The Quran is beautiful. Okay, khalas, I'm done. <laughs> now I can go and do my thing. They had no problem, people of Mecca had no problem with generations before the Prophet. There was always one in a generation, two in a generation, three in a generation. They used to call him Al-Ahnaf. The people who did not worship the idols, they just worshipped one God. Quraysh, it never bothered him. Muhammad believes in one God, it doesn't bother them. But when Muhammad وسلم, moved from being Salih to Muslih, now we have a problem. From righteous to wanting righteousness for everybody and demanding change, now we're going to fight Muhammad. And you know what happened? They changed from a sadiq, they called him kadir. Can you believe that? You know, people attack the Prophet ﷺ and Muslims go mad. Do you know <laughs> the Quran preserved all the attacks on the Prophet and answered them? They call the Prophet kadab, liar. Asher makes up stuff, not only lies, he makes up stuff. Kahin, monk, sahir, magician, majnoon, crazy. Shair, poet. You know all that, what happened? Before that, before he said, I'm a prophet, a messenger, I demand change from you. They came to him, they said, okay, one God, fine. How about we worship your God one God, one year, and you worship our gods one year? Can you just talk? Plus, can you please explain to us, and Allah mentioned this with Shu'aib also. How in the world believing in one God has to do with our social status, economical status, and dealings, political status? How, what does believing in one God have to do with how I treat my wife, or how I treat my husband, or how I treat my daughter, or how I treat my slave, or how I treat my money, or how I charge interest, or how I fight? What does it have to do? Let God be with God. God is in the house. God is in the Kaaba. Separation between life and faith. The Prophet ﷺ said, I will not take your offer. So that's why, brothers and sisters, the fact that you were born and raised Muslim shall not give you too much comfort. Because Islam, alhamdulillah, it's inherited, but it demands from you change. And if you want to know how hard is change, you know what we are all here? Do you know what's our wish? Any Muslim, weak in faith, strong in faith. Do you know what's his wish? To meet the Prophet ﷺ. And do whatever you want after that. You want to kiss his hand, kiss his feet, kiss his head, hug him, do like the Sahabi. Oh, you hurt me. Can I, I want to hurt you back. The Prophet exposes his side and he goes and kisses the side of the Prophet ﷺ. He said, I heard that when someone's skin touches your skin, that skin is forbidden from him in the state of Iman, obviously, right? So, I want you to think of this. Imagine seeing the Prophet for 13 years in Mecca and not wanting to believe in him. You know why? Because people don't want to change. They don't want to transform. They don't want to become. Change starts with honesty with yourself. That will translate into honesty with others that will translate into honesty with Allah and that will translate into honesty with any of his creation it is it's unbelievable and honest people are so rare in the world you will be noticed that you're honest so brothers and sisters 
I love to, like, mashallah, there's so much beauty in this. The brother here has an amazing voice, mashallah. Some people, Allah give them beautiful faces. Some people, Allah give them beautiful bodies. Some people, Allah give them beautiful voice. Some people, Allah give them beautiful mind. Some people, Allah give them beautiful knowledge. Some people, Allah give them beautiful akhlaq. Allah distributes the rizq between the ibad. Everybody has his own strength. May Allah bless. There's a lot of beauty. But let's be grounded again. And let's say, I want to try and start my journey of transformation. I don't want to meet the Prophet وسلم, on the day of judgment. And he says, you knew what I wanted from you. You knew my legacy. You knew what made me happy. Why didn't you do it? Why did you keep on talking about me, talking about me, talking about me, talking about me? But when it came to you embodying me and for people to see me through you, you refused that. Why? Are you ready to answer that? Or you want to keep on fooling around and beating around the bush and saying tomorrow and not me. And I'm not a sheikh and I'm not an imam and I'm not a scholar. I'm not a alima. I'm not sheikha. I'm not imam. I'm not... I don't know what you're saying to yourself. I don't know what shaitan is saying to you. I don't know what your nafs is saying to you. But enough is enough. The Prophet said, people will come to my basin, to my lake. And I want to give them a cup from my hand. If you drink from that cup, you will never feel thirsty ever again. Before you enter Jannah, before you enter Jannah, you will lose the sense of thirst. Done. And I'm ready to give it to them. And some angels come and move them away from me. And they say, they did not follow you. They did ugly things after you. Do you want to be that one? So brothers and sisters, let's mix this beauty and this knowledge with the niyyah. I want to embody the Prophet I want to embody. I want people to say, Allah is beautiful because of these people. Islam is amazing because of these people. Because of you. The Prophet is amazing because of you. Today, reality check. Internet. Instant messages. Instant. Before that, what was there? The internet. Before that, what was there? TV. Before that, what was there? Radio. Before that, what was there? Cars. Before that, what was there? Horses. So I want you to go in your mind and take... Instant messaging, take it out. Then take internet out, no more internet in the world. Then take TV out, then take radio out, then take the cars and the trains. And before the industrial revolution, we're ending up with what? With horses. Islam spread in 30 years from the day the Prophet died, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, reached from China to Morocco. You know, brothers here, Indians, Pakistanis, Chinese. Do you know that your grandparents entered Islam and they had absolutely no clue what the Sahaba were talking about? Because they didn't speak their language. They just looked at them and they were so impressed. Not by their lectures. They didn't even speak Arabic. But they were impressed, taken, taken, completely taken, that your grandparents became Muslim because of that. Now, put back everything else with instant messaging. We cannot do 1% of what these people did without internet, without airplanes, without TV, without all of this. We keep on posting on YouTube. We keep on doing. The world will change. The world will change when a few people will decide to change. Then Allah will make it roll. You understand? So, bro brothers and sisters, I, you know, there's so many angles to as sadiq al-Amin. I want to be mindful of the time of the other speakers. Barakallahu feekum. And, 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 you know, be mindful. Allah is zikum khair. Barakallahu feekum. But, yani, look at this. Consider this. We are at the time of self-change, self-motivation. Change yourself. Just, subhanallah. You are at a time where everyone demanding change from you to become better at your company, better at making money, better at this, better as a husband, better... And people will pay $6,000 plus the tickets to go to Fiji to meet, what's the name of the guy? Who has an in Fiji? Uh, uh, Tony Robbins. $6,000 one weekend plus airfare to meet Tony Robbins to sit with him for one week so that he tells them what? Believe in yourself. 
I'll charge you 600. For free, for free. And what we're saying, believe in Allah, make your intention. You can do it. You can do it. You were made to do it. You have mind, heart, soul, nafs, body. You were made to do it. You are qualified to do it. This stuff is easy for you. Allah will never burden you with something that you cannot bear. But you keep on selling yourself. I cannot do it. I cannot change. Shaitan keeps on telling you, later, later, later. People tell you, come on, man. Khalas, tonight, you, you don't, tomorrow you change. Just, let's have a party right now. And between bad friends and bad nafs and bad shaitan and bad temptation of life, day after day passes and nothing is happening. So I believe our masajid are open for transformation. And I want to end with this. Alhamdulillah, I like this. We're all together, this and that. Talk, have good friends, transform. Because the greatest teacher ever lived was Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu The greatest students were Alu Baytihi Al-Abhar and the Sahaba Al-Kiram. But yet, we don't refer to them as the great teacher and the great students. We don't refer to them like that. It's very interesting. We refer to them as the messenger of Allah. This is the messenger of Allah and his companions and his friendships. Do you know what's the method of learning? Don't overwhelm yourself. Find a companion. Find a teacher. Find someone. Find a janitor because Allah sometimes teaches you from where you do not expect teaching. Humble yourself. Learn from squirrels. Learn from trees. Learn from stuff around you that Allah created and step by step, slowly but surely, slowly but surely, become a friend of a cat, become a friend of a tree, become a friend of the Quran, become a friend of the Prophet, become a friend of Allah. It's unbelievable. Islam sets the stage, you are Abdullah. Once you get that straight in your head, Allah says, I am your Sahib. <gasps> I never heard that. Where do you get this stuff, Shaykh, from? I'll tell you where I get it. I got it from the dua of the Prophet. ﷺ. When you travel, do you know what you say? Allahumma anta sahibu fi safar. <laughs> ya Allah, you are my sahib in my traveling. You want a relationship with Allah? Today, people impress us. Muslims are leaving Islam. It's not a religion, it's a relationship. <sighs> Whoa. No, it's a religion and a relationship. Both. You understand? Allah is your sahib. Quran is your sahib. The Prophet ﷺ said, Iqra al Quran, fa inna hu yati al yawm al qiyamati shafi'an bi ashabih. Read Quran, for the Quran comes as an intercedes on your behalf for his friends. Become the friend of the Quran. Become the friend of the Prophet ﷺ. It's not too late. We are his friends and his ahbab, as you know. So, but start your journey. The journey starts with are you honest with yourself? Are you truthful with yourself? Or you think you are Mr. or Mrs. Perfect? Or you think there is nothing wrong with you. Or you think you don't need change. Or you think it's all right. It doesn't work like that. And that honesty will translate in your economics, in your decisions, in your family, with everyone else. And the king of you know, Hercules was very smart. He called Abu Sufyan. Abu Sufyan was not a Muslim at that time. People, he told him, stand behind him. And if he lies, tell me. Did this man, before he say he's the messenger of God. Did he lie? Did he lie? They said, no. Abu Sufyan said, no, he didn't lie. We used to call him the truthful, the trustworthy. He looked at him and he said, do you think someone will not lie to people, but will lie to God? <laughs> you know, kings, you know, they have some brains, right? They have some politics. They know where's the ins and outs of things. So, please, are you excited about changing? Are you excited? They fed you dinner for God's sake. You have a thousand calorie over what you need. Are you excited about becoming sadiq with yourself? Do you want to change? 
Ya Allah, help us to change, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Make better people out of ourselves, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Make us leaders to ourselves, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Make us followers of your Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Make us a copy of him, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Make us from the people who honor your name, honor the name of your messenger, and honor the name of your deen. Ya Allah, every day make us better people, Ya Rabbil Alameen. And instill in us your love, the love of your messenger, the love of Al Ubaytih al Abhar, and the love of his companions, and the love of the people who follow him to the last day. Ameen, Ya Rabbil Alameen. I'm about to collapse from tiredness. Jazakumullah khair, barakallah fikum. And again, I feel this, I'm not disrespecting anyone, but please allow me to go and rest. Allah is zikr khair, barakallah fikum. So, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar.